for nine years, an uneasy peace occurred in the Atlantic Ocean. While we still had notable hurricanes like Sandy and Irene, they weren't to the scale of the titans that once dominated the seas. The titans I am referring to are the Category 5 hurricanes, and it seemed that it was not the case anymore. But then, September 30th, 2016, happened. <laughs> On that day, the titans that once dominated the seas and caused catastrophic damage wherever they went, started to return. On this day, one of the most rapid hurricane intensification cycles occurred, not seen since the days of Hurricane Felix, all the way back in 2007. On this day, the hurricane in question more than doubled its strength from a modest 80 mile per hour category 1 hurricane to a hellish Category 5 hurricane with winds of 165 miles per hour. This hurricane would then go on to make landfall and kill hundreds of people in Haiti before causing significant damage to the Bahamas and turning to Florida. This hurricane would be the reason why the National Weather Service issued the first ever extreme wind warning. Welcome to the Hurricane Matthew documentary. Hello, I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor, and welcome to the Hurricane Matthew documentary. After nine long years of an uneasy peace, Matthew would roar back to life. And what would result of that is the return of the Titans that are Category 5 hurricanes. In this documentary, we are going over everything, from the storm itself, to the damage, to the skull that has become most infamous with the storm. Like many other hurricanes at this time of year, Matthew began as a tropical wave off the coast of Africa on September 22, 2016, and began making its track across the Atlantic. It would start to become an area of interest for the National Hurricane Center, and was designated Invest 97L while it was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on September 25th, and Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance aircraft began to investigate the system. However, something was off with Invest 97L. Typically, these invests were of tropical depression strength, ranging from 23 to 39 miles per hour. However, by September 27th, 97L had tropical storm force winds, and even though there was no close circulation, it strengthened anyway. This would change quickly, and at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or 1200 UTC, 97L was upgraded into Tropical Storm Matthew, as the hurricane hunters found a closed circulation in the storm. What was not expected, however, was that it had 60 mile per hour winds by the time it was named. Matthew would continue to strengthen, becoming a hurricane on September 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and it was expected to gradually strengthen due to some troublesome wind shear that was limiting it. However, the wind shear unexpectedly and rapidly weakened, causing Matthew to go Super Saiyan. The hurricane hunters found that Matthew had winds of 100 miles per hour at 1.20 a.m. on September 30th. This was just the start of an explosive intensification cycle not seen since the days of Hurricanes Dean and Felix. Matthew would become a major hurricane at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time as hurricane hunter aircraft continued to find the hurricane strengthening at an explosive pace. It became a Category 4 hurricane six hours later, and at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Matthew became a Category 5 hurricane with winds of 165 miles per hour, the first one since Hurricane Felix in 2007. In 24 hours, Matthew more than doubled its wind speed and intensified at a rate not seen since that time. It also was the southernmost Category 5 hurricane on record, besting Hurricane Ivan's record in 2004. While Matthew intensified, its forward speed slowed down dramatically, and the water that previously caused it to explode in intensity now turned against it as upwelling of cooler water took place, and this cooler water caused the storm to weaken back down to Category 4 strength with winds of 140 miles per hour by 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, October 1st, but it was still a beast by all means. It began to turn to the north towards Haiti. Hurricane warnings were quickly issued across Haiti as this monster was approaching. Matthew fluctuated in intensity between 140 and 150 miles per hour as it slowly approached Haiti. Hurricane warnings were soon in effect for all of Haiti, the eastern half of Cuba, and all of Jamaica, 
with watches going in effect for parts of the Bahamas as it was expected to turn after it hit Haiti and head for the United States. All day, October 2nd, Matthew moved at a snail's pace as the ridge guiding it so far weakened and allowed Matthew to move to the north. However, the hurricane continued to maintain its very strong intensity, and on October 3rd, it began to bring impacts to Haiti, re-strengthen, and achieve a secondary peak intensity of 150 miles per hour. Matthew began to close the distance between it and Haiti, and hurricane warnings were issued for the Bahamas as watches went up for the Florida coast. Soon, storm surge and heavy rains were impacting Haiti and eastern Cuba, and in the next morning at October 4th, at 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Matthew made landfall near Los Angeles, Haiti, with winds of 150 miles per hour and a pressure of 934 millibars. The impact was absolutely devastating, and the storm surge, as well as the rain causing mudslides, made Matthew arguably the worst hurricane to impact Haiti in history. Another thing that made this landfall infamous, not just in Haiti, but around the world, was the satellite image at the time of landfall. Matthew's satellite image showed that the core of the hurricane had the shape of a skull as it made landfall in Haiti, and the image went viral. The eerie image exploding across social media, a satellite photo of Hurricane Matthew. It sure does look like a smirking skull, especially with that devilish red background. Florida meteorologist Matt Devitt of Wink TV in Fort Myers noticed the spooky likeness. The image is everywhere, scary skull of Matthew. Skull image of Hurricane Matthew spooks the internet. Eerie face spotted on satellite image. This caught the attention of many people, and soon the whole world was talking about Matthew. However, the skull was not so innocent as a Halloween decoration, as reports soon came in that hundreds of people were killed in Haiti due to this monster. That and the image itself caused panic across where Matthew was expected to hit next, especially in Florida, where hurricane warnings were issued and Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency and warned people that Matthew would kill them. If you're watching in your evacuation area, get out. Don't take a chance. Time is running out. This is clearly going to either have a direct hit or come right along our coast and we're going to have hurricane force winds. There are no excuses. You need to leave. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Are you willing to take a chance to risk your life? Are you willing to take a gamble? That's what you're doing. If you're reluctant to evac evacuate, just think of all the people this storm has already killed. You and your family could be among these numbers if you don't take this seriously. Anything more you can do to get people to know the severity of this, please do so. Unfortunately, this is going to kill people. Matthew's next target was eastern Cuba, where after making landfall in Haiti, it moved toward Cuba and made landfall there 13 hours after it did in Haiti, with winds of 140 miles per hour and caused hell in the country. However, the mountainous terrain in Haiti and eastern Cuba disrupted its core, to an extent at least, and weakened down to a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 115 miles per hour. However, once done in Cuba, Matthew would begin to reorganize and re-strengthen. On October 5th, Matthew began to impact the Bahamas and southern Florida as its core was rebuilding. Matthew would weave through the island chain as it re-strengthened back to a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour by 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 6th. With hurricane warnings now as far north as South Carolina, Matthew would begin its long parallel track of the east coast with landfall or a close brushover expected in central Florida. However, two things began to happen at the same time that would lead to Matthew's downfall. First, an outer eye wall began to develop while traversing the Bahamas, and while it didn't start right away, an eye wall replacement cycle began to weaken the storm as it approached Florida, inching closer and closer to the coast. Another thing that began was that Matthew was moving into an area of stronger wind shear, and while immediately doing nothing to the storm, it would weaken it further in the long term. Matthew slowly weakened back down to Category 3 status on October 7th at 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. However, due to the outer eyewall strengthening and the close proximity to land, the National Weather Service issued the first ever extreme wind warning for Brevard County, Florida, with Cape Canaveral reporting a max wind gust of 107 miles per hour. Matthew continued up the east coast, weakening down to Category 2 status at 6 p.m. off the coast of Jacksonville. 
Matthew then paralleled the Georgian coast on October 7th, as Governor Nathan Deal prepared for any significant damage from Matthew should it occur. However, Matthew passed this area and moved towards the Carolinas. All the way, Matthew was slowly weakening, becoming a Category 1 hurricane at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 8th. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley declared a state of emergency two days earlier, but Matthew is now closing in on the coast. And at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, October 8th, Matthew finally made landfall near McClellanville, South Carolina. While the wind damage was not as bad compared to some areas in Florida or Cuba, the flooding was absolutely catastrophic. Matthew would re-enter the Atlantic Ocean and finally become extratropical on October 9th, before dissipating the next day, leaving behind a path of catastrophe, hell, and pure destruction from Haiti to North Carolina. The damage across the board ranged from moderate to catastrophic. Haiti suffered the worst natural disaster since the 2010 earthquake and arguably the worst tropical disaster in its history. Everywhere in the country was impacted to some degree. Storm surge, flooding, and mudslides saw 546 people killed and over $2.8 billion in damage from Matthew. Infrastructure was absolutely destroyed, making it harder for help to arrive. The United Nations quickly acted to help those impacted in Haiti, as they saw the worst of the hurricane, and it is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, with local logistics incapable of helping those in need due to the damage by Matthew. Cuba suffered similar damage. The eastern provinces in Cuba were heavily damaged or destroyed by the storm surge and extreme wind. However, compared to Haiti, the death toll was not nearly as bad. Only four people were killed, but the damage was almost $2.6 billion. Parts of the Bahamas, including Grand Bahama, suffered extensive damage from either the storm surge or extreme wind in both of Matthew's eyeballs. Thankfully, no one was killed, but $580 million in damage occurred, mostly in Grand Bahama, but it would pale into comparison to what was to come. While the damage was not as bad as it could have been, it was still extensive in Florida, more so in the Cape Canaveral area. At Kennedy Space Center, the highest wind gust for Matthew occurred in the United States, peaking at 136 miles per hour, with the sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. The planned launches for GOES are, which was the next generation weather satellite, and Synergis, a cluster of smaller satellites to study hurricanes, were ironically delayed due to the type of storm they were trying to study. Overall, 12 people were killed in Florida, with $2.77 billion in damages occurring. The damage in Georgia and South Carolina was more limited as Matthew was starting to weaken. However, hundreds of thousands were left without power, and there was some flooding due to the storm surge and rain in those two states. Overall, seven people were killed, four in South Carolina and three in Georgia, and the damage between both states was almost $350 million. The state that probably suffered the worst from Matthew was North Carolina. Here, massive flooding occurred due to the insane amount of rainfall that occurred in the state. The Tar River crested at 24.5 feet in Greenville and at 29.09 feet in Smithfield. Governor Pat McCroy declared a state of emergency due to the flooding and would famously use the first two minutes of a gubernatorial debate to announce the evacuations in Moore County below Woodlake Dam. Very proud of our emergency operations team and all of the state and local officials. I do want to make an announcement that, however, if you're in Moore County and you live below Woodlake Dam, we need to clarify the announcement that if you live below that dam, you need to evacuate that area immediately because the engineers have not certified the strength of that dam based upon some work today. And I need to make that point very, very strong. If you're one of the 60 holdouts, leave. Do not put yourself at risk and do not put our emergency operations people at risk. In total, 26 people were killed in North Carolina, and the cost was $1.6 billion. Matthew was just the start of a reign of new Category 5 hurricanes, a new generation of them. The next one of these Category 5 hurricanes would cause massive destruction from the Lesser Antilles all the way up to Georgia. But that is a story for another time. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this documentary. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more. We have documentaries coming out every Saturday, so be sure you do not miss them. But with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day and stay safe.